guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Modesty33 here, aka Crystal with a C. And I'm back at you with a new video. This is going to be a review of War for the Planet of the Apes. So I was super excited about this film. Um, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of background before I get into my review. Um, if you're not familiar with War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, but I do recall that um, as a child, um, if you remember the versions, um, there are earlier versions or earlier renditions of uh, Planet of the Apes back in the 60s, 70s, I believe, um, because I know my dad used to watch them. I used to kind of watch some of those with him or um, watch some of those while they were on television. So um, I was familiar with Planet of the Apes before um, the series initially started. Um, and so I was super excited to see this last film. I've seen the other two. The other two were really good. Um, if you're not familiar with the other two, um, the first one, I believe it came out in 2011, but I could be mistaken on that. I didn't look that up before filming this. But um, the first movie was called uh, Rise for the Planet of the Apes, which was awesome, superb. Um, my best friend will remember. Like, I saw that movie late. Like, I think um, I got out of the theater probably like midnight because I was one probably um, saw it when it originally screened. And um, I feel like the best movies are the ones you go into with like very low expectations. And then like they are so above and beyond what you expected. So that's what um, that's what Rise for the Planet of the Apes was for me. It looked like it was going to be good from the trailers, but I didn't go in expecting too much. And it surpassed like all expectations I had it was clear concise had a vision um you could tell somebody spent some time into that movie so it was super wonderful it was very well done I called my best friend I was like girl you need to go see this movie this movie's awesome we need to talk about this tomorrow you need to see this movie and you need to call me so um that was the first movie the second movie is called Dawn for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes which was really good as well um, but you can kind of see gradually from Rise of the Planet of the Apes to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and to this movie, War for the Planet of the Apes, how things continually got a bit darker and a bit more dramatic. So throughout the film for War for the Planet of the Apes, um, I kept thinking like, man, this is super dramatic. This is very dramatic. Like this is almost like, you know, you're watching a movie about people. And again, the movie is um, pertaining to apes. I'm sorry if you can see my gum. I'm not really smacking or chewing very hard but it is still in my mouth so hopefully that doesn't offend you um side note um but um movie was super dramatic so it had a lot of very serious themes in there and i'm gonna give you a spoiler alert because i am gonna be talking kind of doing a synopsis of the film and kind of pointing out some areas that i that were you know kind of striking to me some questions i still have i guess um I'm sorry, I'm again on the selfie stick, but announcement, good news, I just got a tripod for like $11 from Groupon, so hopefully that should be coming in the next week, so no more shaky videos at home anyway, so if I'm out vlogging, you just want the deal, but um, as far as the home videos, they should be a bit more stable, and I can actually use both of my hands freely as opposed to rigging up something, but um, anyway movie was super dramatic. It was really good. Um, a very fitting ending. Um, and I would, um, you know, go ahead and say that um, out of the three movies, I feel like I enjoyed Rise of the Planet of the Apes the most. But that doesn't take away from Dawn of the Planet of the Apes or um, from this movie, War for the Planet of the Apes. But I enjoy like movies that have a mixture of action as well as drama and laughter. And there wasn't a lot of laughter in this movie. I will tell you that. It was pure, strictly like, um, you know, basically war and the effects of war. Um, on Caesar, um, who is the protagonist in this film, he is the leader of the apes, um, as well as um, the protagonist in this film is the colonel, played by Woody Harrelson. And it was really um, good to see Woody Harrelson actually in a role. He doesn't really play roles like this very often as far as playing an antagonist or playing um, a bad guy, you know, another word for antagonist, um, or a villain. So it was really, it was really cool to see him in this type of role. And then, um, of course, Caesar is played by Andy Serkis, who, if you don't know, 
Andy Serkis was Gollum slash Smeagol in Lord of the Rings. So I have always, I always will have a love in my heart for Andy Serkis. But um, anyway, so Andy Serkis plays Caesar. Um, so again, with this film, I'm just going to kind of touch on some points that you know, kind of were striking to me. Me and my best friend talked about this at length yesterday. I'm not going to get into all that. I kind of wish she was here with me because she had like a lot of parallels that she saw in this film. Um, biblically, like um, just in, you know, um, in history. Like, so it was really cool talking to her about the film. Um, and I know other people, you will probably watch the film at face value, but I'm that type of person. She's that type of person where we'll look at a film and we try to kind of relate it to something going on in society or kind of think about, okay, where was this person's mindset when they made this film or, you know, where are they trying to insinuate? Basically, you know, as far as the film is concerned. Some films I can kind of take and be entertained. Other ones I'm kind of looking at, okay, what was your agenda in this? So that was kind of War for the Planet of the Apes as well. So anyway, um, again, you have Caesar's the protagonist who is the good guy, um, who is your hero of the film. And basically you start off with Caesar and, um, what I did like about the film is they did do kind of like a brief recap. Um, it was like, you know, basically kind of words on the screen, kind of like Star Wars type, not, not just like Star Wars, but basically kind of giving you a recap of what had happened in the other two movies with Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So you get that little recap, that little refresher, and I would really actually like to watch those movies again um, to kind of get a better idea too. Um, I'm that type of person. I like to watch kind of movies together and kind of see things I didn't see before, put the pieces together. So, Ooh, excuse me, but... um. Yeah, so they did that in the beginning of the film. Then you have um, like soldiers who are coming in who are trying to basically raid, find the apes. They're actually trying to find Caesar because they believe Caesar is the one who started the war with the humans. But if you remember from the second movie, there was another ape called um, Koba. Koba had the one eye and he had the other eye who, that was kind of messed up. He was the ape that um, from the first movie, but... In the second movie, he turned against Caesar and then he was trying to start a war basically with the humans because he had had a very hard life, you know. Um, Koba had been experimented on. He was an ape who, again, they had done all these tests and trials on him. So he really had a strong hatred for humans. So you can see that in the second movie. He was not like Caesar. You know, Caesar was raised by humans and had that connection, but Koba had only been hurt by humans. So again, Koba um, really um, did not want any type of peace with the humans. He ended up starting like a war with the humans. And then, um, but, you know, Caesar ended up killing Koba like at the end of the second movie. And you can tell in this movie that really haunts him. Because it's like, you know, Caesar still has flashes of Koba and is really afraid of turning into Koba himself and having... Um, a hatred for humans itself because of the things that humans have done to him. And you see, like, in the first 20 minutes of the film, like, you know, the humans came to kill Caesar and they ended up killing, like, his wife and um, his older son. And I was like, dog, like, 20 minutes in and this is how we doing? So, yeah, it was, it was quite dramatic. I was like, wow. So, Caesar still had his younger son, Cornelius, but, again, he had lost his wife and his older son. Um, so again, you just kind of see all this transpire. Um, and then, you know, Caesar is essentially paying for the mistakes that, um, Koba made, but even in Caesar's mistake of trusting Koba. And I found it funny because, you know, Caesar's having a conversation with one of the other apes and, you know, he was like, man, I should have seen that, you know, Koba's betrayal. And, you know, the other ape is telling him like, oh, well, nobody saw it. And I'm like, okay. I feel like y'all were really trying to see the best in Cobra because when I saw that ape in the first movie, I'm not trying to be funny, but when I saw that ape in the first movie, I was like, something ain't right about that ape. Now, I blame the humans, first of all, because y'all made the ape that was already suspect looking, you made him smarter. You're going to give him the little virus to make him smarter. So you're going to make this ape smarter. And then, you know, this is Caesar's right-hand man. And I'm like, something ain't right about that ape. 
I'm like, his spirit ain't right. I mean, I'm I'm trying to just be honest with y'all. That ape, that ape, Cobra, his spirit wasn't right. And you gonna trust him to be your right hand man? Really, Caesar? Like nobody, and then, then y'all want to lie to yourselves in the third family and be like, well, nobody saw it. I'm like, no, you didn't see it because you didn't want to see it. But isn't that just like us in life where there are people around us and you can definitely tell they not right, something not right about them, but you let them all in your home, let them all around your kids, let them all, all up in your the business of your marriage and your household. And then when they go and do what they do, because that's that's what they do. Then you come back and you're like, oh man, you know, I didn't see it. Nah, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> please don't do that. Um, this was kind of a lesson to me, you know, and this is again, I'm, I'm kind of just filming this raw. I wrote a few notes, but you know, this is just kind of off the cusp, but we really need to pray about relationships in our life, like friendships. I'm not talking about, you know, dating or marriage. Like, I'm talking about just people you're interacting with, people you're letting into your life. We really need to pray about those people because those people can have a profound impact on our lives. And we don't necessarily see it when we befriend the first person. But um, you let them into very intimate areas of your life. And that's what Caesar did with Koba. He let Koba into very intimate areas of his life and of his family. And he let Koba in too close. So Koba knew where Caesar was sleeping at. He knew about his family. He knew, um, you know, he knew a bit too much. And you can see, again, he got beside himself in the second movie. But again, we're talking about the third movie. I don't want to go too much into that. Don't want to get off too much on a tangent with that. But that was a little side note. Keep that in mind. Pray about the relationships and the people you allow into your life. Because just like it was with Caesar... It could be very detrimental to your life in the natural. I know we're talking about apes. It is a movie. But there are lessons to be learned in everything I feel like in life. So let that be a lesson to you. Be mindful of the people you allow into your life and really pray about them before you allow them into intimate areas of your life. So again, moving forward, um, they had that little conversation you know, again, they still in denial, apparently, about Koba. But Koba's dead at this point, so it don't really matter. You have to deal with the fallout of what you allow. So that's where Caesar's at. So then you have this, the antagonist, the colonel, who essentially wants to kill Caesar. And he comes in thinking he's going to kill Caesar. And he ends up killing Caesar's wife and his son. So his older son, um, Caesar has a younger son named Cornelius. So Cornelius did not get killed. So Caesar still has his younger son, but his older son and his wife were killed by the colonel. So then Caesar um, develops a, like a hatred and not just a hatred. It seems like a bitterness in his heart about the humans. Um, and it's like very much more so that like he's kind of kind of becoming Koba in a sense and harboring this hatred in his heart for what the, this one particular human has done to him, which is take his wife and his son. So now he has revenge in his heart and he kind of forgets that he is leading a group of people. So Caesar gets very emotional and is led by his emotions. And instead of, you know, um, the other apes try to talk sense to him and, and, you know, and tell him because they're talking about um, leaving the woods and going to the desert, you know, a place where the apes can be safe and be, you know, kind of off from civilization and away from the humans who are trying to hunt them. So... Um, this was originally the plan before the colonel came in and killed Caesar's son and his wife. But then Caesar becomes very emotional and he wants to go after the colonel and he wants to go after the humans and get revenge. So Caesar, is, in a sense, forgets that he's leading this group of people. Caesar has responsibilities, but he lets all that go. He's like, no, I'm going to go kill the colonel. And he goes after the colonel. Um, he ends up getting captured, but not only does he get captured, but because he left all the other apes alone, they end up getting captured as well. So then you have all this that transpires where, um, you know, the apes are trying to work together to get out of this situation because with the humans, essentially, the humans are about to destroy one another, as humans do. So, um, you know, in, in the end, basically, I'm just going to fast forward past all that. Again, this is a spoiler alert. Um, so if you, you know, you don't want to know what happens at the end, don't watch. But, you know, I'm basically kind of giving you 
a, my synopsis of the film, things that were kind of striking to me. But, you know, in the end, the apes do escape. The humans essentially kill themselves. I don't know if all the humans have killed one another, or if there are any humans left besides um, the one little girl that they found and that, you know, went with the apes. Um, but, um, again, Caesar does end up leading the apes to the desert. Um, you see that he kind of overcomes this, you know, the revenge that he has in his heart. Um, and then in the end he dies, which is very sad. But, um, and it was funny because in the movie, because I saw the very late movie, I saw the 1030 showing. So it ended at 1 a.m. There was a lady in the movie who had like Caesar was like her daddy or something. I don't, I don't know what was going on with this lady. But, like, I thought it was a joke, but near the end credits, the lady is, like, hollering. Like, this is like a funeral cry. And I'm like, what is going on? The lady is just crying, like, Caesar, why? Why, Caesar, why? And I was like, what in the world is going on? And the woman is sobbing, like, for real. Like, that, throw your body on a casket, take me instead, Lord. It's that sob. The lady is sobbing. And I'm like, okay, I considered crying, but then it got cut short when, you know, I see this lady sobbing. I'm like, ma'am, you need to go home and go to bed. May the late movies is not for everybody. So I don't know what was going on in her life, if it reminded her of somebody that died, but the lady was for real sobbing. And, you know, she was like, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, you know, I just get so emotional. I'm like, ma'am, this ain't the place, though, you know, so... Um, Caesar dies in the end, you know, if you didn't know that, uh, I don't, you know, if you read anything about the movie, um, I don't know how you didn't know it, but essentially, you know, because when they talked about the movie, they said this was the end of the journey for Caesar. So I interpreted that to mean that Caesar was going to die and Caesar did die, but it was a very fitting end for Caesar. You know, I have to say that I'm not mad about the fact that he died in the end. Um, what I can say about it is that it felt like. Caesar fulfilled his purpose. So it's like, what a fitting death for Caesar. You know, um, if you watch from the beginning to the middle to the end um, of all three movies, you know, um, what a fitting end for Caesar. So it was a sense of accomplishment to me. Um, I was sad, but I'm like, man, like he fulfilled his purpose in a sense. Like he, he did what he set out to do. He led the apes to safety. So it's like, you know, now his work is done. So, um, I would be interested to see if they make any more movies. I know when I read, um, before I saw the movie, they did talk about making additional movies, but of course it's not going to include Caesar. So, um, I would be interested to see, you know, what direction they go in if they do decide to make feature movies. But, um, again, that's pretty much, um, the synopsis of the film. I give it two thumbs up. I'm holding the selfie stick with the other hand, but there's a thumb on that hand. And then, you know, um, let me see if I can, no, we're not going to try it. But, um, I give it two thumbs up. My other thumb is occupied, but, um, definitely go see it. Definitely. It's an awesome movie. Let me know what your thoughts are below in the comment box. Um, I'm going to leave you with footage of before I saw the movie and kind of my outfit of the day. You know, I was trying to be cute and things. So, um, yeah, um, I'm going to leave you with that footage as well. Um, of, you know, before I saw the movie and I think I may have said some things or whatever about what I thought was going to happen or something like that. But I hope you've enjoyed this review. I definitely recommend seeing it and I recommend seeing all three because I really want to go back and watch all three movies together. So I'm going to do that at some point. So happy, you know, excited about that. So I can, you know, even get a little bit more context and see a few more, um, uh, see a few more things. So again, if you enjoyed this review, please give me a thumbs up. Please um, like this video, which is the thumbs up. Please comment below any of your thoughts if you saw the movie or if you're going to see the movie. Um, or which movie out of the three are your favorite. Again, I would say that the first movie is my favorite, but I did enjoy the um, other two movies as well. And definitely this movie. So definitely comment below which is your favorite movie or any thoughts you have about the films. And definitely share this video. Subscribe. Please subscribe. I am going to do some more reviews. So thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Modesty33, a.k.a. Crystal with a C. And we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.
Hey guys, it's Modesty33 here, aka Crystal with the C. And I am here to show you my outfit of the evening. I'm about to go out and see War for the Planet of the Apes in a little bit. Might have a few stops on the way. Don't know um, if I'm gonna see the 7 p.m. showing or the 10.30 showing. I haven't decided yet because I kind of want to catch up with um, a few of my friends um, first, but we'll see. So um, It's Friday night, July 14th, by the way. And um, just wanted to go ahead and show you my outfit that I'm wearing out to the movies. Um, and I'm going by myself. Don't be afraid to go to movies by yourself. If you really want to see the movie, I am a movie person. So um, I'm yeah about to go and see the movie in a little bit. But I am going to see it tonight. Lord willing, prayerfully, I can go ahead and see it tonight. I done got dressed and got my stuff together. So I'm going to yeah try to go see it tonight. But I'm really excited because I love Planet of the Apes. I've loved it since the first one when they did the remake. Um, kudos to the director who did Planet of the Apes, man. Because I think like I went into the movie when I saw the first one, like really with not really many expectations. But I knew Andy Serkis, who is my boy from Lord of the Rings movies. He played Gollum slash Smeagol um, slash, um, yeah, yeah, Smeagol slash Gollum in the movies um so um i always like to support you know an actor from one of those films since it is my favorite set of movies but anyway um so yeah um wanting to go out and see it um the first movie was awesome second movie was really good as well so this is third movie is supposed to be from what i've heard anyway um, the conclusion of Caesar's journey, but they may in fact do another movie. So, um, what are my expectations at this moment? I actually, let me tell you the truth. I actually don't, I've been kind of conflicted cause I was like, once I heard when people were saying, or when I heard the reviews or the critics or whomever, I don't remember where I read that, but, um, basically when they were saying that this is the end of Caesar's journey, I was just like, is Caesar going to die? Because I'm not here for that. So I really kind of didn't want to see it. But then at the same time, you got to see the third movie. You got to see the conclusion of a character's journey. So, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with Caesar. I'm hoping he doesn't die, but I'm kind of feeling like he may. So uh, I am going to do a full review once I see the movie. But just want to kind of give you my um, expectations or what I'm, you know, what what I'm really expecting, which kind of expecting Caesar to die. I don't know if that's going to happen or if they're going to, you know, twist it in some type of creative way, but I guess we'll see. But I'm excited to see it. Um, movie is two hours, 20 minutes. So um, if I see it at 1030, it's going to be after midnight when I get home. But if I see it at seven o'clock, it's going to have just gotten dark. But I do want to catch up with my friends. So decisions, decisions. But anyway, let me do my outfit of the day for you guys. Um, again, I've got my crocheted hair that I cut into a little bob because it was a little hot um, last week. So I was like, um, it ain't my hair anyway. So I'm about to cut this joint. Um, so wearing my glasses again, can't, can't really see without them. So, um, wearing these earrings, I just got these earrings from one of my friends. So really happy about that. Wearing those tonight. Yes. Um, also lipstick I'm wearing, you probably can't really see it. You know, it's very bright outside. So it's kind of washing out my outfit and, and things like that. And again, I'm filming on my phone, so don't really know how to adjust all the lighting and everything, but hopefully you get the idea. I'll, I'll tell you what lipstick I'm wearing. And um, when I get back and I try to do a review, maybe I can do it in the in my my bathroom area where you know I can get a little bit better depiction of my outfit and the lighting might be a little bit better, even though it'll probably be dark. But we'll see, we'll see. But um, lipstick I'm wearing is Mac. It's a liquid lipstick and it's topped with brandy. One of my favorites, so definitely recommend that if you don't have it. This right here is, um, you know, kind of a cold shoulder shirt right here. It's got, um, it's kind of got like, um, a little embroidered design. It's like a light pink. Um, really like this shirt. I got this shirt from, let me turn around this way, y'all. See, now you can't really see my face. So this is the window depicting all of the light out here. So I'm gonna turn back around y'all cause I can't, I'm not here for that. Um, so you just got to see the washed out shirt, but okay, let me adjust a little bit here. 
don't have my selfie stick with me right now. So bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Um, and don't mind my bed. I um, do a bit of work from home, so I have stuff a little bit everywhere. Nothing confidential, so you're not about to see all that. But um, let me take a step back. So anyway, um, sure is kind of like, again, um, an embroidered type of pattern. It's a light pink, um, cold shoulder. It's got the little frilly detail here. Got this shirt from Versona, which is a store here. I never heard of it until they open one up here where I'm living at. But if you look it up, they might be able to tell you different locations if there's one available where you live. But it's a cool little store. It's got nice clothing, um, really nice accessories. So actually this necklace right here is from Versona's. Let me give you a little close up. And it's around the same color as this shirt, which is, um, I think it's called like a peach color, peach jewel or something that I read on the description. But um. I um, got this for my birthday from one of my friends and you know I got these earrings from another friend not the same friend so I was like man that's pretty cool they actually match without even realizing it so and I got these earrings like a few days ago from one of my friends and I got this one of course last week um, when um, went out for my birthday which again was last month but didn't get the opportunity to go last month because I was so busy trying to get things done preparing for vacation so um it's like a peach little jewel and it matches perfectly the chain is gold with um this shirt so really happy about that have my skinny jeans that are light colored and i've got these um brown i'm sorry y'all i can't i'm not here for this oh lord but um these are just like some brown you can't really see them but they're like brown strappy sandal shoes so that's what i'm wearing today um about to head out. I got a few errands, of course, again, to run. Um, let me show you my jewelry, too. I've got my ring that I typically wear. Um, that's one of my errands. Actually, I'm going to get my ring cleaned and inspected from K Jewelers. Um, also, I've got my Belova watch. It's upside down here. Got that on. Then, oh, my arm's tired. Vlogging is not for the faint of heart. I'm sorry. Y'all probably got a view of my messy bed but um and all my stuff on there um this is um bracelet that i got from my friend last week for my birthday as well so wearing that um and again um it's got a scripture on here let me put it this way maybe you might be able to see it better boom like that wonder woman anyway but um it's joshua 1 and 9 is the scripture on here let me read that and it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord, your God will be with you wherever you go. And that's Joshua one and nine. Let that be the word for the day. Um, so I'm wearing that bracelet that she got me as well. And this is also from Versona as well. So nice, another nice little accessory. And then I'm wearing um, this ring right here. It's not a wedding ring. It's just a ring that my mom gave to me. But I think it is a wedding ring, but it ain't. It's not my wedding ring. But um, anyway, so that's what I'm wearing going out today. Let me show you my bag. Hold on a second. Let me. I'm just going to back step. All right. Cool. And then side step. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay. Here we go. Yes. So anyway, I'm trying to step back into the light, y'all. Okay, so here's my bag, oldie but goodie. When I say oldie, all my bags, none of them are really, um, for me anyway, a year, like older than a year. Because um, when I get onto something, I go hard. So I got into luxury stuff last year, and then I started going on eBay. The rest is history. Um, so I may, in fact, that's probably one of the videos I'm going to do is like kind of like um, luxury bag collection, what I have right now in my collection, and tell you about some of the things I've sold actually. And I am actually have one item that I'm going to be selling as well because I just no longer fits in my collection. So that's the good thing about buying luxury things because, um, again, if you don't want it anymore, it has a value attached to it that you can sell it for if you get the right brand anyway. So anyways... That was my little spiel. But um, again, oldie but goodie. When I say oldie, again, it's not, you know, I haven't had the bag for a very long period of time. I think I actually bought this particular bag November of last year, 2016. 
But um, the bag is old, and it, um, purposely I wanted the bag to be this age. And the bag is the same age as me. The bag is 33. It's kind of a big bag, but it's a speedy, if you can't tell. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's a speedy 35, um, classic speedy. So not the bandolier, but um, was wanting just to wear like a hand carry bag today, go along with my looks. So um, wearing my Speedy 35 classic um, vintage bag today. Um, and I've got, if you didn't see it already, I've got my Lauderay um, Macaron bag charm that I got from London. Um, and it's like gray. And then the macarons are like pink, gray, and black. Um, this all kind of twisted. Let me straighten that out and show y'all, you know, so. And then um, the little charms, again, it's got um, the macarons on there. And then it's got the Eiffel Tower. And it's got like a little girl playing with a dog or something. I don't know what that's about. But, um, yeah, let me show it to you. It's a little bit straighter here. So I've got that little bag charm on there. Then on the back, I've got my... Um, just my key clay, Louis Vuitton key clay. And then um, with that, I'm doing all this in one hand, y'all. I'm gonna invest in a camera next year. Um, it's, but it's gonna have to be next year. You know, I just got off of vacation. So um, on the back here, I've got my clay, which has got, you know, just a few coins in there. Nothing to, you know, stick me up and rob me over, probably $5 in there, so that's it. Um, and then I've got another little keychain. This is um, from Wicked the Musical when I went to London. So I got this little keychain. So that's all. That's all I got on my bag. Then I've got some um, hand sanitizer from Bath and Body Works in there. I think it's um, Thousand Wishes. So that's all I've got. That's my outfit of the evening as I'm about to prepare to go out, run some errands. I'm trying not to put my like little finger over the little camera area, y'all. But um, that's it as I'm about to go and run some errands. That's my outfit of the night as I'm about to go again, like I've said a couple times, run errands and then go, um, sorry about that. Go run errands and then go to the movie. So um, I may not even put this footage in when I do my review. I may or may not. We'll see. But um, just want to kind of give you a little outfit of the day, trying to look cute but again, going to movies by myself because I enjoy movies. So always, you know, try to engage in activities you enjoy. And if nobody, you know, I didn't ask anybody to come with me. So I'm not going to say, well, nobody would go with me to the movies because I didn't ask anybody because I enjoy seeing movies by myself. So, um, but, you know, don't be afraid to go out and do things by yourself. If you want to go out to dinner by yourself and dress up, look cute, you know, wear your nice stuff and, you know, do, do what makes you happy, essentially. <laughs> Or, you know, at least what's going to be good for you. You know, you know, some things that make us happy actually hurt us. So that's another story. But healthy things that make you happy, you should do them. So again, you guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Modesty33. I'm going to come back to you with a review of War for the Planet of the Apes, which is um, the first movie I'm seeing this month. So, um, and this is again... Friday, July 14th. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And again, um, hope you all have a great night and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.